Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today, as we continue our first reading through the Acts of the Apostles, we are now in chapter 14. And we are one of the, it's always good just to remember one of the primary purposes of the Acts of the Apostles, this book, is to demonstrate or sh to show us the, the actions of the Apostles. How, specifically, how the same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus animating his life, teaching and preaching through his life, demonstrating the kingdom of God and the power of the kingdom of God through healings, signs, wonders, and miracles, that same Holy Spirit that was doing all of that and that raised Jesus from the dead is now in us, is now in the apostles. That same spirit is now animating these early first century apostles, teaching and preaching through them just like the Holy Spirit did through Jesus, healing and demonstrating the power of the kingdom of God through them just like with Jesus. So right away, uh, one of the purposes of the Acts of the Apostles is to get rid of that little myth buster where they say, oh, when we see Jesus doing something in the Gospels, oh, well, that's because he's, he's, he's God, you know. Jesus is God, so he can do all that stuff. What about the Acts of the Apostles? Peter's not God. We know that. Paul's not God. John's not God. How can they do the same thing Jesus was doing? You know? And so... This is the pattern that Luke wants us to get. That's why one of the main reasons Acts of the Apostles is, is written. And it continues generation after generation for every generation who receives this same Holy Spirit of God. So when we're reading, we, we want to learn, use this as a school of the Holy Spirit as we're reading the Acts of the Apostles, to, to learn from the Apostles. How do they continue the mission of Jesus Christ in word and demonstration of deeds? And so we would, as we're looking at in this, with this purpose for the Acts of the Apostles, we can center on the healing that took place. <clears throat> this crippled man, lame from birth. These things should stand out to us where we're almost like, huh? How, how did that happen? And, and dive in, spending time reflecting, meditating, going in. It says, here, here they are at Lystra. There is a crippled man from, lame from birth who never walked. I mean, Luke is being very specific. He wants you to get this, he, this never, how incredible this miracle was. Never walked. He was listening to Paul speaking, and Paul, who was looking intently at him, Paul saw that he had faith to be healed. Don't you ever wonder, what does that look like? What did Paul see <clears throat> that he saw this man had, he saw with his physical eyes, right? He's not a feeling in his heart. He saw something. You and I, we have eyes to see, yeah? So we should be able to see when people have faith to be healed like Paul. What did Paul see? It's home, it should remind us of the story as well where Peter and John, they're walking into the temple to pray at the hour of prayer. And they see that man out there begging outside the temple. And they look intently at him. And they see he has faith to be healed. And so Peter says, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. Both of those stories start by saying he looked intently at him. Are we even looking at each other? Are we looking to see each other? Isn't it an act of love to be able to look someone in the eyes and say, I see you. Boy, we gotta slow down, don't we? I see you. I hear you. They say the eyes are the window of the soul. Do we ever, do we have the courage to look into somebody else's soul? To look intently and see, what can I, when I look at you intently and intentionally, what do I see? Do I see hunger? Do I see faith? Do I see sadness? Do I see joy? Do I see hurt? 
Do we have the courage to look ourselves in the eyes, in the mirror, intently and see, what do I see in myself? If we're not even stopping and slowing down to look intently at people, to, to intentionally see them, we'll never, this healing will never happen in our life. See, this is a school. The scriptures are a school that we have to learn from. He saw that he had faith to be healed. I think we could say what that looks like, it it looks like a hunger, a desire that says, I want that. I want what you're saying. I want what you have. We know what hunger looks like. We see people on the street hungry. We see you take children into the toy store, hungry for those toys. You can see the desire, right? What did he see? He saw faith to be healed. He saw desire. I, the body language that said, I want that. We know what that looks like. Look at any kid in a candy store or in a toy store, and here comes the desire. I want that. So Paul, <clears throat> he saw this man had faith to be healed, had desire to be healed. His whole body language was screaming out, I want healing. That means Paul must have been speaking about healing. Paul's there, he's talking about Jesus. How do you talk about Jesus without talking about miracles, without talking about healing? You can't, or you're not talking about the whole Jesus. And so he's talking about Jesus, this man, Jesus. He died for our sins and God raised him from the dead. While he was alive, he was preaching and teaching about the kingdom of God and he was healing the sick, cleansing lepers. He raised the dead right in front of us and drove out demons so people could be free to live their life in a relationship with God. It was amazing. As a matter of fact, after he rose from the dead and went to heaven next to the right-hand side of his father, he sent his Holy Spirit, that same spirit that was in him, he sent in us and all who believe. And Paul probably heard the story and told them the story. Matter of fact, you know, Peter and John, they were just going to the temple one, one day for the ordinary hours of prayer, and they saw a crippled man out there begging, and they, and, and they said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. Silver and gold, I have none, but what I do have, I'll give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. And the man got up, and he was leaping and jumping and praising God. <clears throat> and probably shared other stories he heard, and stories as well that happened in his own life, proving Jesus Christ has risen, is alive. And as he's sharing especially these stories about Jesus and healings, and especially healings of a people who were lame and could not walk and all of a sudden they can walk, probably shared the story of Jesus healing the paralyzed man that was carried in down through the rooftop by four of his friends, right? And as he's sharing these stories, this man's desire for what Paul is saying is growing. I want that healing. Hey, I'm lame from birth. Maybe Jesus can heal me. If Jesus is alive in you, Paul, like you say, maybe he can heal me today. Paul sees the desire for this in this man that says, I want what you are saying. I want it. And Paul is looking intently as he's preaching and as he's speaking and as he's sharing about Jesus and he sees, he doesn't even have to ask the question, anybody want to get healed today? Anybody want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Anybody want me to pray for you today? You don't have to ask because he can see, he's paying attention. He just looks right at the man. He doesn't even say, in the name of Jesus Christ. (laughs) You don't have to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, when you're already operating in the authority of Jesus Christ. That's all that that phrase means. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the authority of Jesus Christ that he's given to me. We don't have to say that if you're already in it. He just looks at him intently, sees he's got desire for what Paul has just been talking about, and he says, stand up straight on your feet. 
he skips the whole prayer, just goes right to a command and, and testing, right? If you pray for somebody who's lame, Lord, heal them. In Jesus' name, I pray, heal them. Then you have to say, now test, now, try, now stand up, see if you can walk. <laughs> Paul just goes right to the testing. Stand up! And he does. This is how we have to share Jesus. Share Jesus in such a way that people look at us and say, what you're saying, I want. And it comes down to, you don't have to go, if, if you're not sure about healing, start with what you are sure about. What are you sure about when it comes to Jesus? That he loves you? That he forgives you? That he is the king of peace and can bring peace in your life? Share that part with somebody. Who in your circle of influence do you see is hungry for forgiveness, hungry for love, hungry for the peace or joy that only the Holy Spirit can bring? Start there and simply share, God has done this for me. He can do it for you too if you want. As you're sharing about the peace that's in your heart or the love that you've experienced from Christ or the forgiveness and, and that how the guilt and the shame has been lifted off you because of your relationship with Jesus. As you're sharing the transformation that's happened in your own life because Jesus is alive, you will probably see hunger, desire in people's lives for what you're sharing. When you finish, you just simply say, do you want, do you want, me, you want this peace that that God has, that I, that I experienced? Do you want me to pray and ask God to give you what he gave me? And they're probably going to say, yes. And then you just pray. Jesus, give them what you gave me. Give them the peace that you gave me. Let them feel and experience your freedom and forgiveness, your mercy and your love like you gave me. Let them experience what you've given to me. Give them what you gave me. Simple prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, how do you feel? And let them share with you how, you, how they feel. What did they feel during the prayer? Did they feel God's presence? Did they feel his peace? Did they feel his loving touch? You become a facilitator of the presence of God. This is how we do it. This is the school of the Acts of the Apostles. That's how we share about Jesus and this is how we, and it begins by intently looking at each other. Intentionally looking at those around you. Slow down. Your purpose is not to go to work today. Your purpose, your real purpose, your eternal purpose is to give Jesus to somebody today. If you go your whole life and become a successful businessman or businesswoman, but you'd fail to give Jesus to anybody, you failed. Same for me. I could, do, I could do all the priest stuff, but if I never actually give Jesus to somebody, I failed. What good was I? What a wasted life. Got to get back to the main heart of our relationship with God and the purpose why we exist as Christians. So, Father, we just simply ask you to help us to slow down and learn how to intently and intentionally look at each other, to see the hunger and desire in those around us, and to have that courage to share with them how you can meet that desire that they have. You, your heart, your love, your, your presence is the fulfillment of every desire and we are the carriers of your presence. Help us to live out our mission today. In Jesus' name, amen.